Hi, and welcome to the history lessons in Idupedia world. Following the previous lessons where we've started to learn about life for ancient Romans, how was life for them, today we're going to go and have a look at how the town started. Let's go from the beginning. Because for Romans, starting a new town, the foundation of a new town was a very important event and it was well planned. It had multiple steps and there's lots of specific information and decisions that Romans started making when they were founding new cities or towns that even to this day in new um, towns and improving the structure of modern towns that it has come through the centuries they started with this making it throughout the empire and it is really a core concept that before it wasn't used as much. We're talking specifically that they were the first ones to implement a system of grid. They started urbanistic planning, something that nowadays is so, so basic. They started it. In medieval times, it was, it lost a bit as many things, but Romans started this grid and organized planning for new cities. And as we know, with the Roman Empire, they had a lot of practice in this new city creation business. Well, as we've said, going across the empire, new foundations were often based on military settlements as you can see a basic military settlement already followed the basic lines that then a formal town will have there's this grid structure and certain areas that are specialized or reserved for not the main living areas. Okay, so we've got this grid structure. To start with, the two, well, there's three main concepts. Two streets, two main streets, and the area surrounding it. The first street goes from north to south and was called the Cardo Cardo Maximus, the street that went from east to west, it was called the Decumanus Maximus. And from these two baselines, all the, you will create all the other streets in order. So these are the Maximus, the rest of the streets will be called minoris, so maximum, minimum come from here. The area that surrounded the town and that marked the limits was called a pomerium. This was marked at the moment of its foundation and was normally outlined by the walls. From this moment, burials will always be done outside, for example. There are certain um, rules of what happens inside and outside of this pomerium, the area around it. Well, a new city, as we see, was normally built or created by needs of uh, or interests. It could be strategic, 
commercial or for control of certain routes. And the intention could determine some modifications on this basic model of the grid and a square or rectangular city. Just to give you an exception to this example, we have the city of Girona nowadays, Gerunda uh, as the first Roman foundation. And this city was founded and constructed on top of the Via Augusta to control it. But the terrain is really mountainy. It has some little mounts around and it was so steep that they had to build around it and in this case they made a triangular like grid. You still have the main, two main here, the two main streets but the rest of the city has only three main gates and the old quarter had to be created on terraces and connected by staircases. Here you can see the multiple staircases that had to connect to different levels of the town. So we do have a basic uh, type of town, how in ideal situation, that is how they built it, but they did adapt. Well, the town called also Civitas, Kivitas, was obviously the central element of the community. You had fields and uh, some community around, but here is where you can find the most representative buildings for the essential parts of social structure. So you would have government, you would have temples, markets, and entertainment, all concentrated here. It was the place where farmers and merchants came to exchange. You would have sometimes markets outside the town, but also a central market inside. Also, a city was sacred because it was considered, as we'll see, a pact between the divine, the gods and the community. So when you had a new foundation, it was a sacred act. So let's go and see how you would found a new city, a new town in ancient Roman times, just in case you'd be interested. The intention uh, in every new foundation was to be inspired by the first and most important one as the example. Obviously, we're talking about the foundation of Rome. Just to give you a quick heads up, the mythological foundation of Rome, we have Romulus and Remus, the two children, the two twins. And here we have the wolf, female wolf, that um, helped them keep alive until they were found, as the myth says. But when they decided to found this new city, the two brothers could not agree where to start it. One preferred the Palatine Hill, the other preferred the Aventine Hill. And they agreed that uh, the gods would be the ones to decide who was right. 
So they had this very scientific method where each one took a position in each of the hills that they wanted to prepare as a sacred space and well they had a look at what they could see and Remus saw six auspicious birds, eagles and Romulus saw twelve this is the way they were settling things but uh, Romulus claimed that um, his was superior and that the divine right was he had to decide. Remus was, did not agree and he said that uh, his was better because what he had seen was six vultures. To what Romulus said to uh, dig a trench to build a wall and his brother did not agree um, he went through the belt where they were building the uh, the wall and his brother decided to murder him so yes the foundation of rome started with the fratricide but we'll see why this is important well, what did you do first? You had to choose the correct emplacement that was decided normally by a magistrate. A magistrate was the representative of the Senate as this was considered a state affair. Then you summoned the Gromatici. They were the land surveyors that uh, would perform and help throughout all the ritual. The most important thing was to mark the streets and the area as we've seen before. It was a difficult task but we have various instruments that they used. One is um, Korovate and this was to mark the limits and check the levels. So they were really, really thorough here. Another one is the grommer. That is basically a stick that you nail down on the earth and it has a wooden horizontal cross on the top, as you can see. And from each side of the cross, there's a plum that you, was used to mark the grids. So from this, all the lines were marked as straight. They did things well. They did not start a new town just like, oh, let's do it with a stick. And uh, we'll see how, what comes out. They were really strict. Then they have various steps that you had to follow. First, you consulted the gods, the divinity, with the auguratio. This, you, in here, you seek the approval for this new settlement, so you would have prosperity. The um, fortune tellers, augurs. Uh, normally made a sacrifice reading the insides of a bird. You did not, you asked for answers inside a bird. Yes. This is remembering the eagles and vultures that flew above Romulus and Remus in the first foundation of Rome. Following that, we have the orientatio. Here the magistrate, uh, helped by the technicians with the grammar uh, and all the uh, more technical instruments, go to the centre of what will be the city, they nail the grammar and when the sun rises they orientate it 
and from there they have the two main streets. Remember, the Cardus Maximus goes from north to south, and then you have the Decomanus Maximus from east to west. Here, the magistrate, I have to mention, takes the role of a priest and will also mark the limits of the Templum where you'll have the house of the gods. You always have to have some temples, for, especially for the gods who were going to protect the city. Then you have the Inauguratio. I'm pretty sure this name's ring a bell. Here is where the area around the limits of the town are decided, the pomerium, and you use a plough to move around, move by a, to mark all around, and it's moved by a mule that represented the farmer and the male, and then also a cow that represents the female one is the hard working and the other is the uh, one that gives nutrition that is behind the symbolism. Then you have uh, also you had to designate the gates that was really important because it's quite a sacrilege to cross uh, the limits if it's not through the marked gates like happened in the foundation. Then you have the limitatio that is just marking the rest of the streets, the uh, minor, minori, minori, and also deciding that a quarter of the town's surface was for the public spaces where you would have the forum, the markets, temples, baths sometimes. And finally, we have the consecratio. Here is where following Romulus steps and the death of his brother after crossing the sacred limits that he had previously marked here he makes a, you make a sacrifice to the gods this is very Roman of the uh, time and you would make a sacrifice to the gods to start this new city and hometown in the case of a foundation from a previous town, so some a part of the population moving in group to another emplacement, you would also add some earth from the original town, just as a curiosity. This, all this pompous uh, behavior is basically um, done during the Republic times. In uh, Imperial times, they were cut slack quite a lot. So they were strict with this, but then they relaxed. Not every town went through all of this. But this is the basic example. Then inside, uh, you would start building insulae, for example. This is a housing with two stories and there were small flats for uh, most of the population. And then you would also have the domus, the houses that would be for the wealthy families. Also, you would have, as we've mentioned before, the forum. This was the area for the public spaces and the main buildings. You would have the temples, obviously for religion, the basilicas for judiciary affairs, and the curia for political affairs. We will go deeper into that in the following lessons. I hope you enjoyed seeing how you would found a new city in Roman times, and see you in the next lessons.